Hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Irina. I'm a software engineer at Google. I work on the Bazel team. Some of you may know me from GitHub already. Today, I want to talk to you about code coverage and how we collect it with Bazel. So I've heard that some of you are excited about this talk. And I hope you will be excited after the talk is over as well. <laughs> OK, so I know that most of you already know. But just to cover the basics, code coverage shows you how much of your code was executed when some particular tests run. There are several types of coverage. Some tell you how many lines or functions were executed. Some tell you which of the branches were taken. And some tell you which conditions of your code were evaluated to both true and false. If we consider this very simple C++ example, and we also assume that somewhere we have a test that runs the method foo with parameters minus 1 and 1, then let's see what coverage will tell us. Well, it tells us that 80% of the lines were covered. All of the methods and functions were executed. Only 25% of the branches were taken. But none of the conditions were evaluated to both true and false. So if you look at this information individually, you might draw some conflicting conclusions from them, because some have very high percentage of coverage, while others have it very low. So you have to use some or all of this information together to draw some more meaningful conclu conclusion about your source code and your tests. This leads me to my next point. Why? Why is code coverage important? Well, it gives you the confidence that when you add new code or when you just do big refactorings, you have a smaller chance of introducing new bugs or they are just easier to detect. You also know how all of your exceptions are handled, and also that all of your edge cases are well tested. You're also more confident that all your components are working well together, for example, when you do integration testing, and also that they are just functioning properly when you do unit tests. So there are mostly three types of computing coverage. Most of the time, you would use either one of the first two in combination with the third one to get coverage information. So you either instrument the source code or some intermediate code, for example, the class files in Java. And then you use that to collect coverage information at runtime. So since this is such a nice feature, we decided to add it to Bazel. However, as some of you already know, we weren't very successful when we decided to open source it. There were some problems. For Java coverage, it only worked with one worker. So you couldn't use the parallelism in Bazel. For C++, it was even worse because it was buggy. Um, Bazel would randomly crash. You would get either incomplete or incorrect coverage reports. It was very slow, and it had some other issues that I will not bore you with. So <coughs> we decided to improve it. And now we have big goals and good intentions. Our mission is to generate and collect code coverage information and make it universal and useful to everybody. Yes, if that sounds familiar, that's the Google mission, and we adapted it to coverage. OK, but what does it actually mean? So when I say it's universal, I mean it's universal for all languages. So it has to be language agnostic. But at the same time, it has to be useful. So you have to have enough information to tell you something meaningful about your source code and about your tests. So you have to have the, all of the types of coverage I talked about before for line, lines, functions, and branches. 
but you should also be able to read it. If you just want to quickly check it, you have to be able to read it in a human readable format. So it has to be a way to generate HTML reports from it, for example. And of course, we want to keep the Bazel standards. So it has to be fast and correct as well. So going back to being language agnostic, for that to happen, we need to have one coverage format for many languages. So imagine your code base has sources in Java and C++ and Python. You don't want to end up with three different coverage formats because that means more work. You have to know how to handle all of them, how to check them into your CI, how to parse them, how to make sense of them, and so on. So just let Bazel deal with it. So we needed a language agnostic format. And finally, we went for Elkov. There are several reasons why we chose it, but here are the first one, the main ones. It's easy to parse and to understand. You can also express most of the coverage information that I talked about in the beginnings for lines, functions, and branches. And you can also check for nice summaries just to see if your tests pass some coverage standards that your project chose. It's also very compact, so it doesn't just annotate on the source code di directly. In the end, there is a popular tool, GenHTML, that allows you to get HTML reports from it. OK, so let's go back to our previous example. Here is the ELCO file for it. It might not tell you much, but I really like how simple it is and how every line has a meaning. So for every source in your code base, you would get a record like this one. It always starts with the file name and ends with the end of record marker. So afterwards, you would have information about function coverage. For each of them, it will tell you the name, how many times it was executed, and then a nice summary, how many functions were found versus hit. Afterwards, you have the same information about the lines. The DA lines actually tell you for each line number how many times it was executed. And then the same nice summary, how many lines were hit versus found. Of course, you can also get the same data for branches, but I just didn't include it here. OK, so you want to, if you want to run Bazel coverage on your test target, what Bazel will do is it will output a coverage report for that test target. But what you actually want to do is to run coverage over all of your tests. So let's just assume here that all your tests for your whole code base is under the test directory. Let's also assume for simplicity that under the test directory, we have n test targets. So as I've said earlier, Bazel will output one coverage report per test target. That is good. It's definitely better than ending up with n different coverage formats. But we still have n reports, and that may be too many. So to fix this issue, you could just specify the combined report flag. And that will tell Bazel, hey, just uh, use all the coverage information you already computed and give it to me in one single report. And it will do just that. And for example, afterward, afterwards, you could use GenHTML on that coverage report and get a nice HTML view of all the coverage in all your source code. Just to show you how that will look like on our previous example, here it is. You can easily see which of the lines were executed and not. And in the top right corner, you can also see a nice summary for your code.
Now I want to talk to you about a different use case. And no, it's not about bash code coverage, although that would be interesting as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the use case is you have one test that invokes different binaries. And the binaries correspond to different languages. So in the end, you would want the coverage report for that test to include all the information about all the sources that were executed. So I'm going to choose the shell test here because it's just more convenient. So let's look at this example. On the right side, we have the build file and we define the shell test. We have the name and the source, and then we have two data dependencies. The first one is a C++ binary, and the second one is a Java binary. On the left side, we have the actual test. We have two test methods. Each of them uh, is invoking each of the binaries. We also assume that we have a test framework in place that when you actually run the shell test, it will run these two test methods. So the problem here is we have one test target, but we We'll also, we will actually end up with two different reports, one for C++ and one for Java. The good news is that Bazel will de detect this under the hood and will merge them together, giving you the final output file. So in the end, you will have your coverage report that contains information for both C++ and Java files. Okay. But what do, do we actually support right now? So currently, we have built-in support for Java. For C++, we are currently working on fixing the issues that I've mentioned in the beginning. And we also have plans to add a general mechanism so you could, have, you could add support, coverage support for your Starlark rules. Let's see how coverage actually works for Java test. So if you don't know already, when we just run the, a Java test in Bazel, for every Java library on the dependency graph, we would build a library jar. So for every, every Java library, we get the sources, we compile them to class files, we pack them together into the library jar. When in coverage mode, we also do the same with an additional step. We instrument the class files using Yacoco, which is a popular tool for Java coverage. And then we pack everything together into the library jar. When we actually create a test executable, we will, use, we will wrap it in a Yacoco coverage runner. What that does is it only executes the test, and immediately after, it receives coverage information from the Yacoco plugin, and it immediately converts it to the ELCO format. So we would end up with the coverage file in ELCO format. We also have this experimental Java coverage flag, which should be non-experimental soon. Uh, what, what this does, it, it allows Starlark rules for JVM languages like Kotlin or Scala to add coverage support. And it interoperates very well with the native Java library. So if you use the Java Skyla Starlark API, so the Java sandwich, you would get coverage information for your JVM languages and also for the Java files. This, is, this currently works on all three platforms, so all is well here. <coughs> Let's see now for C++. For C++, the story is quite different. And let's see first how the workflow is. What I'm going to present next is how it actually works 
for basal at head because we decided to go with a different approach to fix all the issues I've mentioned before in a separate way. Okay, so it's only a few steps. So <laughs> let's go over them together. So for every CC library, we'll get the sources and we will compile and link them using some coverage specific flags. Afterwards, we get the test binary in the end and also some GCNO files along the way. The GCNO files are just notes about coverage that we will use later. So we execute the test binary. And after that, this step will also generate the second type of metadata files, the GCDA files. These are basically files containing profiling data. <coughs> so until now, we just compiled and executed the test. Now we ended up with some metadata coverage files, but not with some coverage information. So we have to extract, extract that. And additionally, we will run the GCOV tool, having inputs pairs of GCNO and GCDA files. What that will bring us is an intermediate GCOV file that one of our tools, Coverage Output Generator, knows how to parse and eventually convert to LCOV format. So you will also, in the end, end up with an LCOV format file. As you have probably noticed, the previous workflow only works for GCC. <coughs> we are currently working on adding LLVM support that will use prof data. That should be available this quarter. So as I've mentioned, everything that I presented here for C++ happens under the experimental CC coverage flag. This should become non-experimental when LLVM support will also arrive. Unfortunately, this only works for Linux, but we hope that the LLVM support will work on all three platforms. Okay, but what happens when I want to run coverage on my random test? Well, we are working for on it. As I've said in the beginning, we plan to add a general mechanism that will allow you to add coverage support to your Starlark rules. Our plan is to add a coverage toolchain that will tell Bazel how to embed your coverage tools and also how to get intermediate coverage reports and eventually convert them to LCOV because that's how it has to be in the end. Okay, that was very specific for Java and C++, but let's see here what the bigger picture is. How does Bazel actually compute coverage. So instead of just running the test, we wrap it in a script. The script has these three steps. It says the environment, it runs the test, and eventually runs an additional script to generate some coverage formats. And then it runs the tool I've mentioned before, coverage output generator. For people that already are familiar with how basal coverage works, this tool was formerly known as Elkov Merger. We rebranded it because now it does so much more than just merging Elkov files. So just to go over all these steps in more details, the first one is very simple. It just makes sure that the test knows it runs in coverage. So just to give you an example, it send, sets some environment variables. Some tell the test where to place intermediate files. And for some languages like C++, it needs to know where to place intermediate metadata files, so the GCNO and GCDA files. 
Then we just execute the test. And maybe we also execute another script to generate coverage. This 2A uh, corresponds to running GCOV in the C++ workflow. Whatever it does, when this step is done, it has to generate at least one file that the coverage output generator will know how to parse, and it has to be under the coverage directory. And then we run the coverage output generator. So what it does, it just looks under the coverage directory, and it tries to make sense out of it. So it looks for files that it knows how to parse. Right now, it only knows the ELCO format, which is the dot files here, and also the GCOV intermediate format that I've already mentioned. After it finds the file, it will parse them. It will store them in an internal data structure. And eventually, it filters out some of the unwanted sources. For example, if you use the instrumentation filter flag, you will tell Bazel that you only want coverage for some parts of your source code. So then we have to filter some out. After all this is done, it merges together all the coverage information that was found, and it writes it to the final coverage output file. So that was mostly how coverage works right now. You can find our roadmap at this link. And thank you very much for your attention. If you have questions, I can also take them now, or you can find me afterwards. You can also assign all the coverage bugs to me on GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thank you.